I'm Christine Lee with The Market and welcome to today's show. Today's topic is about assumption is the mother of all beep, beep, beep. You know what? This is G-rated, so we're gonna stick to that, um, those beeps right there. But the point is when it comes to finding and hiring talent, man, you can get clobbered by making some assumptions. And I'm gonna go over one in particular that's so easy to fall into, that I've fallen into, fallen into in the past. I was just talking to somebody who got clobbered by this big time, and I know people are caught up in this over and over again, so I just really wanted to hit home with it and articulate it. So hopefully it can prevent some future disasters, some future pain points from occurring, because see if we can remember this phrase and have it trigger you to say, oh my gosh, okay, this is when I have to pause, stop, and look at the evidence, all right? So here's how it usually goes down. The assumption that happens sounds something like this. And let me let me set the stage, okay? So you're busy, you're busting at the seams, you just want some help. You're like, for the love, just oh, let me breathe. I need, I need some help, I need somebody. I'm working like a bajillion hours and I just want a piece of my life back. Anything could be better than this than nothing in terms of a little bit of time, all right? So then you're like, your judgment is all, all all weak right now, right? Your brain is ready to make all sorts of logical exceptions, just like completely trick you into thinking something is right when it's not, and clouds are just hanging all over your head, right? More from like a survival standpoint. And so here's what this sounds like. You're desperate for somebody, even though you may not think you're desperate, emotionally, you're pretty desperate because you're busting at the seams and you just want a breath of fresh air. So then you come across somebody and they look like they can give you some breathing room. And whether it's the right hire, whether it's the right role or not, right? It can be a completely wrong role. And you think it's justified because, oh, it's going to give you some form of, you know, um, a breathing room, even though in the long run, it's actually going to make it worse. And and then also this is this is the kicker you start shortcutting your steps, right? And so here's the phrase that I want to leave with you today that I'm going to uh, dive into today is, they must be good because they worked at X, right? They must be good because they worked as a blank, right? And so what that does for you is that you justify that they must be the right hire so that you don't have to do your due diligence, so that you don't have to um, spend time, effort, and energy figuring out whether they're really made of the good stuff or not, right? If you could just say they're good, they must be good because they worked at this other place or did this role, then it frees you up from spending the time and the diligence that you have to do to gather the evidence to prove to yourself, to your business on whether they're a good fit or not. Because this done at a high level, guess what? It takes time and energy. It's the right thing to do, but you don't want to do it because the last thing you have is time and energy. That is what's scarce for you right now. So you would love to do anything to skip this. Like, it's like, it's like giving candy to a baby. You're like, oh, there's an excuse to skip, skip the diligence for making sure this is the right hire. Can I just stamp them as good and let them go and um, collect 200? Yes, I would love to do that. So your brain is just like craving that excuse, okay? And so when you hear the word, they must be good because, and let me give you some examples. I've been clab clobbered, friends have been clab clobbered. Oh, um, people that have companies uh, worth, uh, I think he lost nine, $17 million because of this type of phrase. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a biggie, it's a doozy. Um, it does not, um, it does not discriminate <laughs> against small businesses or big businesses. It is an equal opportunity clobber master, okay? So here's how this goes down. Here's some examples. They must be good because they worked for a Fortune 500 company and worked with the C-level executives, all right? They must be good. How could they not? And they work for them for like 10 plus years. They must be good because I spoke to that executive and they vouched for them, hands down. Why even go further, right? They must be good because they worked on Wall Street. They must be good because they worked for a national builder as the president of development, okay? They must be good because they're a vice, they were a VP and made $250,000 a year for the last five years or whatever. 
They must be good because they worked on as a board of directors. They must be good because they taught all these classes or they helped rewrite documents and contracts and worked with yada, 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 right? They must be good. So I should be able to skip these steps. I should be able to give them a free pass. I should just hire them is what you're thinking. So if you ever hear your say, yourself saying they must be good because X, therefore I can skip these steps and save time and money and not be diligent. Uh, like that should be your warning sign. That should be your trigger word. If you see hear some version of they must be good because mm, so that I don't have to do this. Right. So you're like, oh, I had this feeling of relief because they must be good because they did that. Let that be the warning to you that you are shortcutting the heck out of the process that you should be following. And let me give you some more logic behind that. Just because one person was good in one scenario does not mean they're going to be good in your business environment, especially the people with the fancy, sharp titles that are coming from corporate. Oh, those are the worst because here's why they're the worst, because on paper, they look so good. OK. But they're corporate, okay? There is a vast difference between someone being in a corporate environment where there's like all these systems and structures and like, you know, checkpoints and whatnot. And they're kind of trying to be in this box, right? To a good degree. And they come out into your world as being an entrepreneur. Like, hello, wild, wild west. Hello, cowboy. Hello, world of minimal directions. And hello, world of you need to get resourceful at a whole nother level. It is completely different, completely night and day. So when you come from the world of corporate and have to step into an entrepreneurial environment, holy moly, get ready for a ride. And most of them cannot cut the mustard. It's a shock to them. It's like a life shock, a culture shock. It is a totally different way of thinking, a way of being. Now, I'm not saying that they're all bad and they're not going to fit, but I'm just saying it's different enough for you to in no way, Jose, be able to assume that all those skill sets will transfer over. You don't know in their environment how entrepreneurial they had to be, how regulated they were how or how regulated they weren't. You just don't know. And you don't know under what circumstances they achieve those titles or under what circumstances they achieve those results. OK. And so until you investigate further and know that they had this, you know, uh, shiny, title or they must be good scenario finishing that sentence you cannot assume assumption will just is the mother of all blow up your business and make you go cry in a corner and make you never want to hire another person again and if you haven't hired somebody before and or you've you know feared uh, the process of hiring and saw other people fail and and now you failed and now you're like see i told you i should have never hired i should continue to do it myself right that's the evidence you're gathering when you didn't follow the process. You did something wrong. It's like you put sugar in your gas tank and you're like, see, I knew I shouldn't have ever filled up my gas tank. It killed my car. It's like, yeah, because you're supposed to put gas in it, not sugar in it. Right. And so don't use the wrong actions to justify why you shouldn't do something that should have worked and should be the key to unlocking your business and freedom in your life. Right. Do the right things. Follow a process. Follow a process that's proven to work. And not only that, when you go through the process of gathering the evidence the correct way, you know, remember the mindset of you're presenting your evidence to a judge, right? And if you had to submit your package to a judge and say, hey, judge, this is the reason why I'm convicting this person of being amazing, right? Do you have the evidence to support that? You know, will the judge say, oh, this is weak. No, this is a stretch. Like, what were you thinking on this one? I don't think so. So do you have that type of evidence gathered for your candidate? I mean, it's got to be tight because, again, your brain is playing tricks on you. So you have to protect you from you. You have to protect your business from you. You want to have other people look at it if you can, if you have other um, people that uh, are experts at this or mentors or other teammates or other whatever other uh, protective mechanisms to protect you from you. If you're in that space, in that state of hiring out of desperation, don't ever do that. And um, just make sure you got all your I's dotted and T's crossed. And not only that, let's say you gathered your evidence, then you want to go a, a step further and say, you try and poke holes into your own evidence, right? Play devil's advocate, you know, get into the details of what could work, what could not work. See if there's any evidence that you missed on 
things that would come up in a certain scenario that maybe they haven't experienced in their track record and how would they handle it based on current evidence? Would it say that they come out pretty fair or that it would be a downright disaster? Did you even look into it? Is that like a big missing gaping hole that could blow up your whole kind of expectation of what you would want out of that person? Is it a non-negotiable? Is it a deal breaker, right? You got to really be clear on those things. And again, for those of you who have gone through my training and sessions, you know that there's a whole process for getting clarity on these things so you can mark things as, hey, green light, red light, or, you know, hey, this is a non-negotiable, back to the drawing board, all those great things, all right? So follow a process. Don't shortchange it because you are just setting yourself up for some miserable pitfalls and failures and make you want to go cry in the corner. And that's not cool. That's not cool for you. That's not cool for your business. That's not cool for your family. Because if you're working like a dog and you don't have any leverage and you're doing it all yourself, let me tell you what, you've maxed out your business. That's about all you're going to see, all you're going to get. And there is no room for growth for you. That's, that's not, that doesn't sound like fun. And if you're the entrepreneur that I know you are, you want more. I mean, you want better quality. You want to find a be better, a better, 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 a way to do it better, even more efficiently. And it's going to be through others, success through others, the right others. And so if you want to have an honest conversation on how you can get there, what are the systems and tools that are in place? What are the existing models that can help you so you don't have to reinvent the wheel so you know what steps you need to take so you don't skip the process in case you don't know that there is a process, there is a process. And so you can follow it and you can make sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure by skipping it and not doing your diligence and letting your mind trick you and play games with you. So first of all, you need to know what you need to do. Second of all, you need to not skip the things that you know you need to do. And third of all, I would say if you really want to get down to it and have an honest conversation on where you're at now, where you want to be and how to close that gap in your business so that you can make more while working less. Let me tell you, the key is by finding the right people in your life, in your business life, which then translate to your personal life. Everything is about having the right people surround you. So, hey, let's chat. Uh, let's talk. Go to seizethemarket.com slash talk to book a time for us to have a quick chit chat about your business. Map out something uh, like a step by step for how you can get this done, so how you can break through to the next level. And we would love to help you grow. Again, that's seizethemarket.com slash talk. And until next time, hang in there. Don't skip the process. Make sure you're hiring the right person. And there's so much to this process. Not only that, you know, the right person, the right order, all that good stuff. And so we'll get into that later. But for today, remember, if you hear yourself saying they must be good because of X, therefore, I want to skip the process. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Stop yourself right there. Um, you know, let those be trigger words for you to say, hold it, pause. Let me look around and not rush into this. Hope that helps. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.